What I'd like to do is I'd like to start with a very important issue that I think needs to get resolved right away. I again saw a sheriff's spokesman last night claim that there were only 23 victims. Uh, indicating, for example, they just found other photos, and he said that all of those other photos really apply to the people they had already investigated. We know that's not true. The reason we know it's not true is because we have three children who have been victimized. We have photos of them uh, with the perpetrator eating the cookies um, that were sent home. And none of them have been interviewed by either the school or the sheriffs. So three of our plaintiffs have not been interviewed. So that makes there at least 27. We do a lot of these cases. We do, uh, we do a lot of class actions. In those cases, it's very simple. We get the names and addresses and the last phone number, and we contact every single kid who's gone to that school or been in this perpetrator's class. In that way, people can respond. And I believe if those notifications go out, we'll find that there are many other students. We know for a fact that there are very many students who have left the area who were victimized by this man. They're li living either out of the community or living out of the state. It's not that hard to find them. This particular case I find heinous for a couple of reasons. If you've seen the photographs of the little girls eating the cookies with the semen on top of the cookies and then dripping down on their chins, it made my wife cry and it made me cry. It's just, it's unimaginable. But I want you to think how sick this guy was. He took those photographs of the child and then sent them home. And some of these parents framed them and put them on their bookshelves up until this thing occurred. A victim of this sort of act never gets better. I've never seen one person who's got completely healed from this. We've seen a lot of depression, a lot of isolation. These kids want to go into a room. They don't want to come out. They don't want any contact with their family, let alone outside folks. They have a difficulty dealing with other people. It's awkward. They don't trust anyone. Perhaps one parent, maybe another parent, but no one else. As they get older, and really, I'm gonna say 40% of the time, they turn to drugs and alcohol. The worst case, of course, is suicide. It happens more often than you think. These children realize along the way, they think they're playing games. But when this comes out in the news media and at home, and they're told what happened to them, and they realize that they were eating cookies with semen, they realize that we're be they were being abused when they're being bound and gagged, what they say to themselves is, why didn't I realize that? Why didn't I do something to stop it? Why didn't I go to my parents? And then they, become, they feel tremendous guilt by not doing that. So now they realize it happened to them, and they realize they could have stopped it, so the trauma, the emotional trauma is oftentimes worse. We have two goals. As I told you, these kids are severely damaged. They're going to need care for the rest of their lives. In a civil lawsuit, the way they're compensated in our system, money damages. I need to maximize that recovery because we don't know what's going to happen to them. The second part is we can change things. We really can. What I hate about this is I wish we lawyers weren't necessary. I wish when this occurred, companies or schools would simply do the right thing, but they don't. For example, if you have a, a Ford vehicle that's defective, they won't fix it until they have three or four lawsuits that cost them several million dollars, and then they do it. So here, I believe with the school system, until they get hit with a large lawsuit, they'll realize it's cheaper to take care of that case and change the system than fight them one by one. And as the school district indicated, they want these children to be able to move forward and an early resolution would put that. Um, the last thing that would, if we didn't resolve the case, would mean a trial. And while I love litigation, it's what I do for a living, it's horrible for most, most people. And it's really horrible for young, young children. So I'd like to challenge the system to come forward and do the right thing. Um, I'd like to do it quickly. I'd like to do it within the next month. So my personal phone number is 661. 799-3899. I invite somebody from the district to call me and we'll have we'll hire a retired judge and get moving on this. Thank you very much.